हेलो 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 हाई गाइज गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम बैक टू न्यू वीडियो की हाल चाल आई होप यूज डूंग गुड इन दिस वीडियो सी प्रॉब्लम मे माइज मैक्सिमम ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड टू एनी स्टोर डिस्क्रीमर हेड विल सी टू अप्रोचेस नॉट जस्ट वन वन द फर्स्ट वन विल द मोस्ट इंट्यूटिव नेक्स्ट वन विल बी एड ऑन फॉर यू टू नो how to think of for that specific algorithm now let's see it simply says that you are given an integer n which actually indicates that there are n specialty retail store now there's a word specialty attached with it you will see why there are m product types which means i have m product types of different amount and these you can say are two product types with the amount of 11 and 6 respectively which are represented by quantities now you have to distribute all these products make sure there is a word written as all you have to distribute all of these products to the corresponding retail stores but as you remembered those retail stores were a specialty stores so a store can only be given at most one product type which means that if a specific store as you can see here i have six stores which i have indicated by simple dashes if i am giving a product of type let's say blue i can only give him blue i cannot give him then red one as you can see red one are six blue one are 11 so i can give all 11 okay i can give 11 which means i can distribute those 11 but i cannot distribute by simply saying if i have let's say this six retail stores okay blue i gave two and one i gave red no this is not possible because they are specialty stores and that is the very 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 important stuff for this problem now ultimately uh, they are saying that after distribution each store will have been given some number of products possibly zero that's also a very important point why you will see later but which ultimately means that there is a possibility that a store is empty have no product at all and also they are saying let's represent x represent the maximum number of products given to any store you want x to be as small as possible which means that you have to, you want to minimize the maximum number of products that are given to any store now not saying that you have to mug it up but a standard stuff which we had been seeing in last 600 problems is that whenever the things are said to maximize or minimize especially in this terms there's a high possibility either dp or binary search will be applied i am not saying that you should know it should be applied here but it's just okay a plus factor okay your mind clicked if even if you are not able to understand ultimately in the end try to you know like put up like bs which means binary search or dp and try to think okay, can i solve it if in the end you are not able to even come up with any intuition at all then in the end try to put, try to do it and again many programmers use this now coming on with the example uh, we have 11 and we have 6 now ultimately we have n retail stores you have to distribute these products technically by the optimal way they are saying the maximum the maximum limit per store as you can see you have to you want to have x to have as small as possible and then x represent the maximum number of products given to any store and you can see the maximum products i have given to any store is 3 and i have to just minimize that maximum value now ultimately firstly i will ask you very edge cases because see these edge cases when i say edge cases which means okay what's the minimum store possible what's the maximum store possible these edge cases in terms of binary search can be used as lnr or in terms of dp can be used as base cases so any which ways to understand problem you should know about the edge cases of that problem itself so i will simply say what is the minimum limit which a store can have minimum as you can see here the minimum is 2 what but what's the minimum obviously it can be 0 i can have zero store so sorry zero product to a store so minimum is 0 what is the maximum what i can have maximum limit as you remembered one store can have only one product type in few cases maximum limits are usually sum of all the products but in this case what will happen i will only put one product type on a specific store so for a specific store maximum product can at max be the maximum value in the quantity because obviously in worst case i could put all 11 products here and then all six products here this is the worst case possible 
So what happened in this case is the maximum limit will actually be the maximum quantity, which is the maximum value in this case 11. So now I know that the maximum is 11. Let's see if it can work or not, because ultimately I want to minimize this maximum value. So let's try with the maximum value itself. If it is possible, I will come down. If possible, I, I will come down. So, okay, I will try with 11. Can I place as a maximum limit of 11? Yes, if I place 11 and 6 as it is, you can see maximum limit is 11. Can I place with 10? Obviously, yes, I can place 10 and 1. Again, these two are blue ones. And let's say this is the red one, red product. 9, yeah, possible because 9 and 2 and then 6. Again, you see the maximum cap is still a 9. So things are possible and I'm trying to go down. Okay, is 8 possible? Yes, obviously it is possible. And then similarly, so on for 7 and 6, it, it is also possible. Let's let's see for 5. For 5, it is possible. Yes, 5, 5 and 1. You can see 11 made up. And then 6 also is possible as another product. Then 4, 4, 4, 3. Yeah, maximum cap is still a 4. And then also 4, like 6 divided by 4, like 4 as 2, 4 and 2. For 3, yeah, it is still possible. And then for 6, yeah. Now, like 2, is it possible? you will see that 1 to 11, 11 is here and then 6 will be here. You see what happened? You used, you have, if you want to have a maximum cap of 2 as a limit, you will have to use 6 plus 3, 9 stores, but you're only given 6 stores. And again, if, even if you try 1, you have to use 11 plus 6, 17 stores, but you only have 6 stores. Zero is not even possible. Obviously, you will have to use infinite stores to, big, to bring the value to 17. Thus, you realized that after coming from the very top, this was possible, 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 not possible. Sorry, yeah, possible, not possible, not possible, not possible. So you realize the maximum amount or, ma or minimum limit which actually helped you or was possible was actually three. So your answer is three itself. And you can see also the answer was actually three. Did you realize a pattern here while you are actually seeing? Yeah, the pattern is right and then wrong. This pattern is for binary search that things are okay, things are not okay. So when I am here, I will say, is it okay? If yes, then come here and try for the fact. This is what the binary search is. So let's simplify the binary search. So what I will do for binary search, I need L and R. Obviously I told you L will be zero, R will be the maximum quantity. Now you might ask Aryan, uh, but you gave us a hint of binary search. See, I never told you binary search was going to be applied here and neither I put it that way. I just told you that intuition is something separate of a fact. This is a fact which we can use. Intuition was more of, let's say, try to see what is the possibility. And then we went on again. I could have told you that, okay, if we go about the brute force way, then the complexity would have been K into N. K is to iterate on all of these numbers and K is nothing but the maximum limit. Maximum limit, if you just look at the constraints, it's 1 E5. And then N, N itself is the number. Number is also 1 E5. So it will also give us TLE. Then to optimize that TLE stuff, we will use binary search. Okay, let's see the code. Again, uh, we saw L can be 0, R can be the maximum quantity. We'll do a simple binary search. Again, this is simple standard BS. Not bullshit, but binary search. While else less than equal to R, get the mid and check if things are possible. If things are possible, you have to try for a lesser value of X, which means you will reduce your R. If not possible, increase your L. And if it is possible, okay, obviously send the answer also and simply return the answer. Now to check the is it possible, which is the obviously the main or the root case of any binary search problem, you will see that is a possibility is nothing but you are checking that this is the maximum limit allowed which means let's say I am at specific step, let's say four, and I ask you, is a four allowed or not? Maximum limit of four is allowed or not? Then you will say, Aryan, I have 11 products. You are saying the max cap can be four, which means that max cap can be four. So I will simply say the max cap, max cap is, if it is four, obviously I will need three stores to divide 11, considering their max cap will be four. Because 4, 4, it will be something, 2 point something. But I want C. Thus, I will say 3 stores will be required such that I, I can put as 4, 4, 3. Such that, see, what, what's, what's happening here? Such that 
the max cap will actually be nothing but 4. And then ultimately for 6 by 4, obviously it will also require, it, it is a 1 point something, I will take C value because I want the max cap. So I will say 4, 2, something like that. So what happened is, I am checking the number of stores required if this is the maximum limit per store. How I am doing it? Taking the seal value of quantity upon the maximum store. This will give me the number of stores required considering this as the maximum limit for this specific quantity. So then I will simply keep on adding. If this number of stores is less than equal to what I actually am given, I am good. Because as you can see in this exercise, number of stores required are 2, required are 3, 3, 3, 5, 5, 6. Ah, as soon as it exceeded, that's not good for me. So if it is less, it's good for me. If not, then, okay, sorry. And thus the complexity will be nothing but O of n log k. n is to iterate on this array of quantities, considering, okay, the quantities is n, or let's say m in this case, let's say quantity is m in this case, and log k will be nothing but the maximum value, as I told you earlier. Quantities of i, maximum value is nothing but 1 e 5. As you can see, this, this thing will define the log term of the binary search, and obviously no space used, so the space is O of 1. Now, this is the first approach, which is also the most intuitive approach. There is one more approach, which I'm going to tell you. This will help you maybe in future because this concept is very hard for many folks, even if no matter how much they try. And that concept is called as greedy. Now, this is actually very hard. It is harder than DP, if, if you don't know. Now, how can we leverage this and why this will be used? If you look back at the problem again, as I emphasized a lot that at the most one product type will be given. This simplifies a problem a hell lot. How? Let's see. So now we are saying the ultimate maksat for us to reduce this maximum limit which we have. If I look at the problem again, I had this 11, 6 and then some empty stools which are having no product at all right now. Then this is the maximum which is 11. Obviously, I should reduce that value. How we can reduce it? By distributing this 11 product into multiple stores. Now you might ask, Aryan, why did you only choose 11? Because obviously, bro, if you remember, I want to minimize the maximum value. So I will choose the maximum. Just try to distribute it so that the value can become minimum. Now you might ask, Aryan, okay, uh, you're distributing it, but how are you sure that just distributing again when i say distributing i will just distribute let's say 5.5 5.5 again i'm distributing in decimal numbers it will be whole number which means one will be five one will be six this is the actual stuff but still just for simplicity let's say i reduce it five five point five five again i'm just simply dividing it product 11 divide to two store now let's say product 11 would have been divided to three store okay i will divide to three store so i'll just say 11 by 3 11 by 3 11 by 3 so i'm just simply dividing that thus bringing the overall value to the minimum but you will say Aaron, the maximum is still six that's a fact what i will try to choose here is just choosing the maximum limit and can i divide it or not if yes good good to go so what i am doing is okay in the very beginning if you remember you had 11 and 6 Obviously, maximum value is 11. Simply divide 11 by 2, 11 by 2. This ultimately, again, make sure this ultimately means 5.5, 5.5, and the other is 6. I still have a places left. I should still try to divide. Now, the dividing and placing on different retail stores is possible because the products never overlap. If I divide it, it will come onto its own space. It will never take space of anyone else. And that is where the fact is that a retail store can have at most one product. And only and only because of this, I can use a greedy approach here. Cool. Let's come back and see the try run. Uh, again, I know that the maximum value now is six. I still have spaces left. Obviously divided six by two, six by two. Now it became three, three. It is 5.5, 5.5. Obviously now the maximum cap is 5.5, which I should divide again. So I will make it as 11 by three, 11 by three and six again, as you can see 11 by three again. So now this is taking three places. Now it is only taking two places. I still have a place left again, do a divide. So now what is the maximum value here? As you can see 11 by three itself is higher than six by two because see, uh, it will be nothing but three point something. It will be nothing but three. So this is higher. So obviously I will take this and I will divide it again. So I'll say 11 by four, 11 by four, 11 by four, 11 by four, and then six by two, six by two. Can I do more divisions? Obviously not because my spaces are filled. And this will be the most optimal configuration because of the fact that I actually ended up using all of these spaces and also, I ended up taking up the maximum ratio person. 
because obviously that maximum ratio person itself will be divided to multiple stuff and things will never overlap with each other. Thus, it is very safe to assume that one person will come at one place. And one person who is coming right now here had the maximum ratio or maximum impact. Thus, it is most optimal to divide that specific person so that he becomes less. Cool. And thus, this is the corresponding answer. So what you did here, you actually at every point realized what is the corresponding maximum ratio of what the current quantity and at what all places he is at right now. So you have to maintain two stuff that firstly, you need a data structure which can give you the maximum ratio possible. You can use anything set, multi set, um, you know, a priority queue not multi-set, um, it should be set. Again, in Java, it is tree set. Or you, you can use a tree map also, which is nothing but a simple map in C++. Or you can simply use a priority queue in layman terms. What the priority queue will contain, that should have the quantity and the corresponding number of places this person is at. On the basis of the maximum ratio, I will take that person and I, if I have the places left, which means in the very beginning, I have only two I have only these two. So I will fill all these four places by simply keep on dividing the maximum ratio person, dividing it to the next place, which means just if, if the places was two earlier, now it will be three. Next time, if it is taken, it will be four. Just dividing that to one more place and doing it only these many times. Cool. Let's see the corresponding code. It's pretty simple. Firstly, I took the corresponding length of my quantities. Then I made the corresponding array and said that this is the corresponding quantity and, the, and in the very beginning, you have only one place assigned to it. Then I knew I need a priority queue. So I took and said, I want a max heap, which is nothing but B0 upon B1, A1 upon A0. You can handle like decimals also, which means like you can handle in dots and like, you know, uh, floating points and stuff, but it's much more easier if you just do a cross multiplication. And thus compare B0 into A, B0 into A, it is A0 upon A1. So B0 into A1, compare it with A0 upon B1. Cool. And ultimately you want to have the max heap. Thus you want this, this ratio to be maximum. So obviously you are putting up this specific stuff earlier. Again, it is more of Java specific, but you wanted a max heap in this a ratio would have been higher. Higher ratio should come first. This is the corresponding maxi which we have because in Java, by default, we have min heap. Now, obviously, uh, we will simply iterate and try to occupy all the remaining places. How I will do it? Grab out the maximum ratio person, take his corresponding quantity, number of places or number of stores he was assigned to, increase the number of stores assigned by one, thus making the ratio from 11 by two to 11 by three. Next time, six by two to six by three, like this. And ultimately in the very end, the ratio, which is the maximum, obviously the maximum, who is having the maximum ratio, is the actual culprit to contribute to the maximum limit. So I'll just get that corresponding culprit and we'll say, bro, because of you, this is the corresponding maximum limit. Simply as we had been doing earlier, that is contributing the corresponding maximum limit for us same complexity, everything is same. It's just that because of you are using a priority queue in which you can actually keep on going up till how many, like, okay, obviously if you have a priority queue, you will have these all values. In the very beginning, I can have N different values. Thus, okay, for the priority queue, when I say N, I mean actually M. So I, oh sorry, I actually mean N only because I will have N different places. And thus in the very beginning, I can have m different m different quantities on top of it thus in the very beginning my priority queue will have these many number of elements so m elements the priority queue and you will see because of the fact that i am always making sure i remove it and add a new element my priority queue length will always remain m so i am having m elements in the very beginning m elements overall which i am actually trying to iterate to it's just that at every operation, I will be removing and adding an element. So it will be still a log M. The only fact here is that I'm iterating on all the remaining stuff, which is N minus M. In worst case, I should say N. So N log M will be time complexity for this case. Cool. Space, obviously, because you are using a new priority altogether, thus the space will be O of M in worst case. So time will be this, space is O of M. And thus you can solve it. Cool. I hope you guys got it. Again, this is not important, but greedy is something which not many people actually tell and also not many people actually understand. So this was for you. Bye-bye. Take care.
do follow us on Twitter because we are pretty active. If you want any questions, doubts, I guess Twitter is the most best way to contact. Bye-bye.